Hello, I'm Donna Erickson, and I'm working with a number of very nice uh, professionals around the world to examine cross-cultural differences in arousal and Dalen's perceptions of voice quality. One definition of voice quality is that it includes long-term settings that change the general sounding of one's voice without necessarily affecting its phonemic performance. Such qualities have different settings in terms of source, vocal fold configuration as well as its tension, and filter, supralaryngeal configurations. Speakers of different languages show different sensitivities to different voice qualities for expressing emotions or attitudes. Some previous studies have looked at ethnophonetics, that is, particular cultural social contexts in which utterances are made, and found that ethnophonetics plays a role in cultural preferences for certain voice qualities. A cross-cultural study on Japanese cake seller voices suggests that Japanese listeners prefer the voice with a slight twang and a pharyngeal narrowing, while listeners from India prefer a voice without any twang. Here's a sample of the cake seller's voice. As for seductive, flirtatious voice, Japanese listeners prefer a non-breathy voice with high F0, while Americans, French, and Brazilian Portuguese prefer a lower, more breathy voice. And here is a sample of a famous sensual voice of a well-known Brazilian female airport announcer while making airport announcements with a low, breathy voice. And this, similar types of voice can be observed at French airports. Jo Rose Con destino a Paris, Paris, Roma, Roma e Londres. E Londres. Embarque, Embarque, Portão, Portão, Quatro. quatro. Jo, Jo, on. In the advertising world, voice actors, actresses change their voice qualities in order to better sell products in different regions. For selling a yogurt product in London, London the voice needs to be perkier and higher pitched. For selling the same yogurt in the US, the voice should be lower and more breathy to sound sexy. In France, the voice should be faster. For selling electronics in the Midwest, the voice needs to be louder with more twang, that is pharyngeal or epipharyngeal constriction. Cross-cultural study of voice qualities are interesting research topics for phoneticians with interdisciplinary ap applications in teaching a second language or psychological, so psychosocial linguistics. So our investigation looks at how are perceptions of arousal, that is excited versus calm, and valence, that is positive versus negative, affected by different voice qualities. The topic of arousal and valence is a common one in research about emotional speech. Previous research about arousal and valence includes findings that arousal ratings increase as F0 increases. And valence ratings also increase with increased F0. But vocal tract configurations are important too. For instance, larynx position for E. For low larynx, low F0, ratings are negative. For high larynx, low F0, the ratings become more positive. So in our study, we're looking at how do speakers of Japanese, Mandarin Chinese, and Brazilian Portuguese perceive valence and arousal? The three languages were chosen for this paper, partly due to accessibility, but also because they represent different language types, both in terms of pitch accent, tonal, and intonational, as well as, well as different cultural groupings, Asian and Western. Methods. 
The voice quality material was made by a female native speaker of English trained in an ESTO method. The speaker produced vowels based on this method and was coached by the ninth author, a certified course instructor in the ESTO method. In this method, the singer or speaker is taught how to isolate control of several structures involved in speech production in the vocal folds and in the vocal tract. The recordings were done at ATR using the MRI recording facilities. The acoustic recordings are part of a larger MRI study to examine how source and filter contribute to voice quality differences. And this paper looks at the acoustic and perceptual analyses of these sounds. So here are the nine sustained vowels that we uh, recorded and then looked at. We have breathy, falsetto, and modal. The breathy sounds like this. The thin, falsetto, and the modal. And we call them thin folds for falsetto because according to our understanding of Hirano's description of the body cover vibration of the vocal folds, for falsetto, the cover is only vibrating. For modal, it's a thick fold involving both the cover and the body. So these were produced at a high F0 and then three more at low F0, about an octave apart. In addition, there was an E produced with the tongue dorsum high, low F0. <coughs> and in order to um, explore the twang characteristics of the cake seller voice, the speaker produced nasal and oral vowels on a high F0 with thin folds at the narrowed pharynx. So here's the nasal twang and the non-nasal. And due to time limitations of the MRI recording session, a complete set of configurations of vowels and voice settings could not be done. Acoustic analyses. We used ARX LF model to estimate F0 and spectral characteristics. We looked at the spectral tilt, that is the slope of the amplitudes of harmonics up to 10 kilohertz. And we know that the steep spectral slope means the energy of the higher frequencies drop off quickly. We also looked at opening characteristics of the vocal folds. And large OQ means more apiotic noise or more breathy. And then we did arousal and valence evaluations. There were 40 Japanese college students in Kobe, 24 Mandarin Chinese college students at Beijing, and these students were presented the sounds over um, a PowerPoint in the classroom setting. We also did look at 20 Brazilian Portuguese from the Federal University of Rio de Janeiro, and the Brazilian Portuguese used a live code interface and listened with Sennheiser headphones. The nine sounds were presented with a different set of four randomizations. And we asked the listeners to please evaluate on a scale of one to five how negative or positive the sounds. If you like the voice, it's positive. So here was what the, the image they were given. So number one is very negative. You see a very negative face. And, very, and five is very positive, and you see a happy, smiling face. And we also asked to evaluate on a scale of one to five how excited versus how calm it sounds. Again, number one is a very calm face, and number five is very, very excited. And the results are here. We see clusters of the languages based on multiple factorial analysis. And we see that um, there are three groups that clearly separate the Brazilian Portuguese, Japanese, and the Mandarin Chinese. The listeners inside each cluster are characterized by the high or low scores they attributed to specific simuli. There is thus a strong relationship between the perceptual judgments of the two scales of arousal and valence and cultural representations of these voices' acoustic characteristics. The details of the MFA are described in the written version of the paper. 
So what did listeners pay attention to? Here is a summary of the mixed effects model looking at arousal ratings and measured values of F0, tilt, and OQ. In this table, beta coefficients are shown in the third column. For open quotient, the coefficients are all negative, meaning that voices with high OQ, more breathy, were judged to be less excited. For all three language groups, more breathy voices are rated as less excited. But there are some differences. For Japanese listeners, the coefficients for tilt and F0 are positive, meaning voices with sustained spectral energy and high F0 were heard as excited. For Mandarin Chinese listeners, the coefficients for spectral tilt is negative, which means sounds with a shallower spectral tilt were more excited. That all languages consistently heard breathy sounds is less excited may be because activation is a global property of the whole utterance based on physiology. However, valence ratings varied across the three language groups, which we show in the next slide. So looking at the table here for the valence, valence ratings measured values of F0 tilt and OQ, we see, again, looking at the third column showing the coefficients, we see that Japanese listeners preferred vowels with higher F0, sharper tilt, and low OQ. Mandarin Chinese listeners preferred vowels with higher F0 and lower OQ, less breathy. Brazilian Portuguese listeners preferred um, voices that were influenced by spectral tilt. They rated as high valence those with a sharp spectral tilt, and then to a lesser extent, those with a lower F0. For details on the statistical analyses, please look at the written version of the paper. So what were maybe some cultural sensitivities to spectral tilt? We now take a closer look at, at two of the E sounds. So here are spectral slices of two E sounds. Utterance six on the left is produced at high F0 thick folds, and utterance eight on the right produced at low F0 thin folds, tongue dorsum raised. So the Japanese and Mandarin listeners preferred the high F0 modal E on the left with a less steep tilt, minus 10.5. And Brazilian Portuguese preferred the low F0 falsetto breath, the E on the right, with a sharper tilt. One other interesting thing to notice is the difference in amplitude of the third formant. 54 decibel for the sound on the left, which the Japanese and Mandarin Chinese listeners preferred, and 43.4 decibel on the right for the sound the Brazilian Portuguese preferred. This increase in 10 decibel, around 2.5 decibels, excuse me, 2.5 hertz, substantially increases the perception of loudness and is similar to that seen for pharyngeal narrowing for producing a twang-like sound, which the Japanese preferred for their cake seller voices, as you may remember. Take home points. As far as arousal, ratings, we found a similarity for the three language. OQ, a measure of breathiness, plays a key role in whether a voice is heard as excited or calm. That is, a non-breathy voice is rated as more excited, more aroused than a breathy voice. F0, Japanese listeners tend to pay attention to F0. They wrote, rate voices with higher F0 as more excited than do the other language listeners. As far as valence ratings, valence ratings varied among the groups. Japanese and Mandarin Chinese listeners preferred, they gave positive ratings to voices with high F0 and small OQ, less breathy. While Brazilian Portuguese were more positive ratings to voices with low F0 and larger OQ, more breathy. Our findings are that the three languages 
separate into three groups when we combine the two scales of arousal and valence. And valence judgments varied across languages. In the Japanese and Mandarin Chinese listeners, they liked high-pitched non-breathy vowels. Brazilian Portuguese listeners like low-pitched breathy vowels. This is compatible with previous findings about seductive voices that Japanese listeners liked the non-breathy high F0. American, French, Brazilian listeners preferred sexy, breathy, low F0. And about cake seller voices, Japanese listeners high-pitched and narrow and pharyngeal narrowing the twang sound, whereas Goa Indian Por Portuguese listeners prefer the lower-pitched voice with no twang. Future work and applications we need to examine more aspects of the acoustic signal that listeners may be paying attention to. We've just examined a few, but there are many more to look at. And applications for second language teaching and carry over to the worlds of business, politics, and advertisement. And this type of research may help improve communication in cross-cultural as well as interpersonal relationships. At least we hope so. And we thank you very much for listening. We look forward to hearing questions and comments sent to our emails or my Skype name is Donna Erickson. Thank you again.